So hello everyone, welcome to our tab. So guys, recently as we know that the NAVAD examination results have come out. So it gives me a great pleasure to welcome in front of you Mr. Bharat who has recently cleared the examination. So first of all, congratulations Bharat from the team Aerotap and from all the aspirants who are preparing for this examination. Thank you sir. Thank you for the invitation. It feels a great pleasure an immense pleasure to be here and share my journey with the students and which can helpful which can be helpful for them. So my first point is uh, uh, Bharat has the feeling sinked in now. Sir, uh, it got settled. Uh, like they, initially, there was kind of mixed feelings when I looked at the result, but slowly, slowly, uh, it settled down, sir. Okay. Bharat, my next question to you will be that: What was your educational background, and how's the journey of Nabad has gone? Sir, I've completed my graduation in 2016 in mechanical engineering. After that, I was working into MNCs. Sir one in an automobile firm and then in an IT firm. While working back then, uh, there was this call of uh, preparing for civil services because the motivating factor for me was to contribute something to the society <clears throat> and that to at a leadership position. This was the driving factor for me to prepare for civil services. And I took a call, I quit my jobs and then I started preparing for civil services. Since then, I've been preparing for civil services for the past five years and then uh, I've, I've given two mains and an interview uh, so far. Last year I've given UPC interview and I couldn't clear that. And then I couldn't clear the pre of UPC again. And uh, then I was thinking about what other exams I have to look at. Because there was this call of UPC again. I, I, the thought was of UPC. But again I was thinking of just let me add one more exam to this and along with the state PCS. So then NABAT came into the picture. So this is how. Because you have just talked about your UPSC journey and I think you have lived a really long journey, five years giving the UPSC and then giving mains, giving interview. So it might be a tedious task. And what was your, that punchline that hit you that now let's focus on NABAT? Because you are going in UPSC and you are giving interviews. So there is always a man, mindset in the mind that I'm giving UPSC, it's going fine and one day I can clear this thing. So, yes. how, what was the trigger point that pushed you towards Nawal? Sir, frankly speaking, uh, the reason uh, today why I was able to clear this exam, it was because of my parents. They were the guiding factor right from the start. I mean, they never asked me to apply for civil services or for any other exam. Right from my childhood, they have been very supportive in whatever uh, task I, want, I, I undertook. And while preparing for civil services, all these five years, there was not even slightest of the pressure from them, write this exam or that exam. I was feeling that, that kind of support from my parents. <clears throat> but even when I couldn't clear the UPSC interview, and again, within five days, I have to give, after the result, within five days, I was supposed to give the UPSC prelims. Sir. I was, I couldn't clear that, uh, then I went back home, again my parents were very supportive, my father in fact said, just don't think about any other thing, just focus on your UPSC preparation and my mother, she was very supportive. In fact, when I went back home, there was this call of focusing on UPSC and taking up a part-time activity of UPSC so that I can continue my preparation of UPSC, like taking uh, joining an institute and doing some answer writing correction or something like that, so that that can help my preparation was the thought process. When I went back home to take some time for myself, once the UPSC result was out, and I was like, you know, let me take some time for myself because it's been a tedious one for the past three years, two mains and interview. I couldn't take time because of the COVID and all. And when I went back home, I was asking my mother, Ma, uh, I, I'm thinking of this thing of taking some part time, which can help my UPC preparation. And my mother was like, what are you talking? Is it needed? We are there, right? So just focus on your preparation. Take time for yourself. Just take 
rest even when you are not studying watch your favorite tennis and all they were they were that supportive i mean and i was never complacent because of the supportiveness i was like i wanted to get get the upsc was the, always the thought process uh, cac civil services once when i went back home i've thought like let me add one more exam which is on the lines of upsc so that that can aid my upsc preparation and keep me very much focused okay for my civil services preparation and that was slightly the starting point uh, once when i looked at the schedule and all of the syllabus and all i looked okay nabad is a good exam which is slightly on the lines of uh, upsc in terms of syllabus and all of course except ard agriculture and rural development i was like let me think about this exam this was the turning point for giving a thought about nabad sir okay so have you known about nabad earlier also or you have then this is the term, then you when you when you are searching about this examination so what was that point that we, because job profile is something that you students want to understand so what was your thought process on that were you clear on that perspective that what is the job profile here what are the different sectors in which nabad is working but it was just an initial thought that let me give a try to this examination which is looking similar to upsc but i do not have the exact idea what actually this organization is all about so frankly speaking i knew there is this exam of nabad but i haven't given a thought of all these years because uh, not just for nabad not even for any other exam apart from upsc and my state exam because always whenever i think of any other exam i was of this thought like it affects my upsc preparation was the thought process mm. and because of the mains and interview process i also couldn't apply for any other exam and this was the thought process going on for all those years and i was like uh, pre was not done then the mains was not done then mains and then interview so i was slightly improving on each each of these years in upsc preparation then last year when i couldn't clear the upsc pre then again i was thinking nabad okay now before applying nabad let me see how it fits my uh, interest is am i going to fit in this uh, work culture or not these questions were going in my mind i was like now let me go to the people let me ask people who are working in nabad how is the work culture uh, how is the job profile how different it is um, is it suiting my interest or not these were the questions were going going on in my mind i went to the uh, regional office of uh, hyderabad ro in fact uh, once after i returned back from my home i went to the regional office i directly met people over there in fact i was waiting at the gate of regional office and i spoke to a few people in fact uh, i was fortunate that uh, a few people one madam she shared her experience who was also a upsc aspirant uh, till mm-hmm. two years ago she shared that uh, she shared her experience in that five minutes i still remember it was on the metro uh, lines actually madam was sharing her thoughts then again i came back let me ask another person's opinion i met a sir who is the senior most one he gave his contact number and he asked me to come to his office so you just come to my office tomorrow i'll tell you uh, all the things ins and outs of nabad and all so the next day i went to the office he spoke to me for one hour he said he uh, what kind of interest uh, you can have like is it suiting your interest or not he was explaining all these things i was very much asking him these are my interests i have this thing for contributing to the society and all i have this leadership thing in my mind as well so he said it, it is a really good organization he said all the things about nabad then i have decided you know this is a really a good exam which i can give and which can also aid my upsc preparation that was the thought process so then i have decided to apply for nabad sir okay so as we are discussing about nabad that now you got motivated that yes i have to give this examination so as you are mentioning that ard is something which is typically unique but generally upsc aspirants are not having an idea on that and rest 
is just we have an idea of pair interference or something of schemes of that sort. But what actually was your strategy when you have known about the examination? So when you thought that because agriculture the time is also less as you are saying that your mains exam the preliminaries you were preparing for preliminary examination and in the month of July you thought let me give Nabar this time. So time is very short. Agriculture gain a new topic. So what was your strategy at that point of time? So frankly speaking, when I looked at the syllabus of Nabar, I understood that there is this merit section and non-merit section. Non-merit section was uh, I, I was able to handle. I, I knew that that was my strength area because of quant, uh, logical reasoning, and English. I knew I can do it uh, without uh, much of preparation. But there is this computer and uh, the current affairs and logical reasoning. Uh, sorry, sir. Current affairs and ESI, ESI and ARD. So these were the topics. I knew that the merit section I have to focus on. ESI, I knew UPC preparation can take uh, care of that. Yes. And for ARD, was the only one thing I need to focus on. So then I was looking at, I need to have a certain material for this. I, I need to look at a certain institute which can provide me that. Then I was fortunate to uh, subscribe a course of EDUTAP and I've subscribed that. And then I was preparing for ARD right from July and to August. Uh, 14, 15 for the ARD. So that's the only thing I was preparing for ARD. And all that, ap apart from that, I was just focusing on the current affairs, uh, which I usually prepared for, for my UPSC preparation uh, for five months. For the past five months of current affairs, I was preparing and ARD. I was just following the course. And uh, rest other things, I knew that I can uh, take care of those things for the thought process. Okay. So, Bharat, as you were just mentioning, have you mentioned about the topics. And at the same time, the live sessions were going on yes. in the course of Erotep. So, were you being aligned to that specific thing in this preparation? Were these uh, live practice sessions, you have aligned your preparation to that specific thing? Or you thought, okay, no, let me first complete this thing, then I will look at the session. So, frankly speaking, again, I was following the live sessions only of ARD, okay. not of any other thing. Okay. Because I knew ARD is something uh, is very yes. important for uh, prelims, that too it's of merit section. So I have to focus only on ARD for the pre okay. of, of that live sessions. So I was only preparing ARD for this two hours on a daily basis okay. uh, from that live sessions. And in fact, during that time as well, I was again focusing on the UPC preparation as well again. And current affairs and newspaper. Newspaper was very much rigorous. Uh, I was focusing clearly on newspaper. Okay. That was the thing that was going on, sir. Okay, so as you've just mentioned, your preparation that you were reading the newspapers or things like that. But if I talk about Nabad, there's a little bit change in what related to UPSC because generally UPSC used to ask questions on analytical liberating yes. mode. But in terms of Nabad, they are asking questions more and more on a factual basis. If I talk about, they are not asking the analytical, analytical ability of a scheme or something like that. They will be asking a straightforward question on a scheme. So what was your approach towards that thing? Because that is something different from UPSC. As I was saying, sir, I was following the materials which EDUDAP has provided. In that, the previous questions which were mentioned, I was looking at the previous questions. I was analyzing those things. What kind of questions are being asked? And I was looking at the quick revision uh, sheets which are provided for each of the topics. I was again following those things uh, rigorously. I mean, frankly speaking, for ARD, I have entirely depended on uh, EDUTAP material. I mean, that was, uh, it, has, it has helped me immensely for the 14 days, 14, 15 days, which I was following the ARD. I was also looking at the previous question papers which you were talking about the direct questions which are usually asked mm -hmm. without any kind of analysis. Because of the analysis which I was doing on the previous year questions, I knew that the certain kind of uh, uh, static questions, uh, direct questions I need to be prepared for, for the factual ones. So that's when I was looking at the quick revision sheets because there's less time for me. I can't go through the entire uh, uh, topics. So I was going through the quick revision sheets Again, I was following the uh, Google and all. I was understanding the topics. If, if I'm not understanding the concept, I used to go to the Google, see what is going on behind those things. So that's how I was uh, uh, managing my understanding of concepts if I don't have any uh, clarity on that particular topic. 
and the quick revision sheets and the previous year questions analysis that was the thing for pre which i was an analyzing and rest of the other things as i was saying upsc preparation was there for the past 5 years uh, it has helped me to handle it with very much uh, calm controlled poise actually in fact the other thing which i want to share is uh, uh, the visualization which i was doing for upsc preparation that visualization process has helped me immensely because there was not even any kind of uh, uh, hurriness from myself uh, trying to uh, read that material this material no 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 i was just focusing staying very calm focusing on the uh, required material so that's how i was focusing on so so you just mentioned about agriculture you have understood the topics because that brings me to the point that descriptive is again a very important thing you mm-hmm. have been writing descriptive but later writing ar descriptive is, it will be something yes. unique here so what was your strategy because you have started agriculture within a few mo- within i can say within just two months you have your phase one examination and within a month you have your phase two examination yes. of nabard and preparing objective and descriptive both at the same time so how what was your approach towards descriptive answer writing for agriculture also sir uh, again frankly speaking uh, uh, for descriptive answer writing there was no specific uh, uh, extra effort i did not put in for nabard exam okay. because my upsc preparation was there it has helped me and once the pre was done uh, after the nabard pre was done i was not at all thinking about uh, the result or the nabard mains frankly speaking because for me the thought process is again the upsc preparation i have to focus on the upsc preparation it's been many months okay till the pre again i have to get ready for my upsc preparation practice my answer writing and all this and september i was taking time for myself and then uh so finding what what are the areas i need to improve and all and then come october i was again focusing on upsc i have to focus on upsc i was not at all thinking of nabard mains actually frankly speaking but then once the result was released on october 7th or 8th i think then my friend told me just the results were out in fact then i, I when i was looking at the result i checked with the registration number not with the roll number uh, i was like chalo i have my upsc preparation preparation now i shouldn't think about uh, nabard now and i was like i was preparing for my upsc preparation and once when i start my preparation back after taking some time I, i'll i'll give complete focus on one work actually i, I don't try to shift my momentum on uh, try to take that momentum back actually okay. so i keep that momentum i stay in that zone and all and that october month was very much uh, the effort was going on for upsc actually Okay. then october 19th when i was writing 18th october 18th when i was writing uh, uh, the geography optional test then a message popped out actually download your nabard mains hall ticket what is this i felt i was like are yaar i checked with the <laughs> registration number and not with the roll number i realized then i uh, checked back then i have decided for this next 10 odd days after 18 19th i'll be having my schedule uh, what what are the sources i need to prepare i i still remember i knew that i've subscribed this course now let me download all this stuff so that this the sources are constant and once i have looked at all the sources acha these are the sources are there i shouldn't look anything beyond that and the rest of the 10 days was very rigorous i mean those were the best times i mean one of the best uh, efforts that i have given in fact during the past 5 years and i felt like a lot of effort went into analyzing these papers uh, the question papers of nabard esi ard i understood that subject again i was looking at the descriptive uh, papers the kind of questions that they were asking i knew again that schemes are being asked in this so i have to specifically focus on schemes i still made notes of all these schemes which are important Uh, so op- important schemes the umbrella schemes which i was making and then i followed uh, the marathon sessions which were taken by you and all the other faculty members so those were also really helpful in that 10 odd days and the edutap i i knew that there were five tests provided by uh, you and i was only focusing on those five full length tests i had to because again i usually type a lot on my keep uh, laptop 
but i knew typing on keyboard is again slightly different task yeah. altogether so for descriptive answer writing i knew that for the next next 10 days i need to type only on keyboard whatever i type it should be on keyboard was the thought process i knew that esi ard descriptive answer writing is taken care of will be taken care of by upsc preparation because i have my geography optional yeah. and in fact i was lucky that i was preparing for optional during that october okay so the facts and all and the upsc notes which i made that again helped me to give good facts good quotes and all that thing so that's how i covered the descriptive part in terms of the uh, uh, quantity i mean so in terms mm-hmm. of uh, uh, the answer quality so that's how i was focusing on and the time management and all the keyboard typing and all i was practicing then and as i was saying uh, during august the first fortnight i was practicing on the keyboard this visualization has helped me actually to buy a keyboard back there and i was like just let me practice this keyboard for the first 14 days i, I think the very great point that you are mentioning how the thing is that upsc is a source that is pushing you towards navar in each and every stage you have prepared you have started preparing your geography optional that also helped you in writing the main answer writing yes. i think upsc we can see the backbone behind all this journey so as you are just mentioning about government schemes see schemes again the approach are totally different for both examinations here schemes are playing a very important role in the examination if i talk about nabard as an organization whereas in upsc if i talk about yes they are playing but we are generally we code the things we are not going really really into depth of a scheme like that so what was your approach what was your sources for the schemes you were preparing for upsc but then also the factual things that you need to remember so what was your point of step that your preparation for that so again uh, talking about that particular 10 days of my preparation as i was saying there is this uh, rigorous effort going on in terms of analyzing i knew that schemes are going to play huge role and current affairs is not being asked i understood yes. that while analyzing that so i was like should i prepare the uh, scheme stack and all these things i was looking mm-hmm. at because the i have shortage of time yes. i was not under any panic as such but i was very calm controlled mm-hmm. everything which i was usually i make a schedule on the previous day and i knew i was doing the schedule on a daily basis if i if i if i'm not re, uh, completing that i used to add to that next day and finish it that was the scheduling and it was very much uh, spot on in terms of how how i was doing it on a daily basis and then these particular schemes i knew that there is no time for me to again read the schemes because for upsc anyhow you will be reading few schemes yes. here and there like based on the current affairs based but i knew nabard is actually going to focus more on schemes so i only have to depend on one particular source and again i was fortunate that uh, uh, again my thought process is also on focusing on the quizzes because i don't have the luxury of time to again read all schemes remember those and that's a huge task actually but i was not worried as such i knew that with calm mind with by giving quizzes understanding where i'm making mistakes and all will keep me in good uh, position by the thought process so i followed actually the quizzes of the, the schemes in the mcq course that is yes, given here so yes. that particular 300 schemes which were provided as part of quizzes yes. i rigorously followed i rigorously uh, i mean solved all those 300 quizzes of each of the schemes uh, and then solved those things and made which are the mistakes that i was doing in the part of my pdf and then again i was repeating the uh, revising those things again and again uh, just before the exam and that that's how descriptive was taken care because of upsc and uh, the objective was taken care because of doing the uh, practice of the schemes and also okay so were you following my friend sessions also that we are conducting on youtube because you are remembering the such a lot of data but i think for quick revision then yes. leave these kind of sessions were you following any marathon sessions or something like that for quick revision of that yes yes sir indeed i was actually doing that for for instance uh, as i was saying the pdf which i downloaded i was actually uh, reading those schemes and all the the uh, the handloom the census various census and all those uh, documents that i was reading 
I knew it becomes very difficult to remember all those things. Yes. But the only way to get them ingrained in my mind is to hear from other people. And hearing from other people, you can't have friends during that time. <laughs> and the only way is to follow again uh, the marathon sessions. That's how I I was complementing my preparation with the marathon sessions. Sir. Okay. So we have discussed about such a thing, but I think one very important thing that I just they just click me at this point of time is you have lived such a long journey of preparing for UPSC then NABARD comes within 10 days you stayed you you were preparing for UPSC geography optional then within 10 days you thought of preparing for the NABARD examination here I think one very interesting thing that I just want I have a, this thing in my mind is what keeps you motivating for this such a long time because you have left your job you're working in an MNC you have left your job then you have given five years for UPSC then award comes there also your prime focus was on upsc and then within 10 days you thought now let's start focusing on award so what was this motivation what keeps you motivated in all this such a long period of time sir as i was uh, saying the motivating factor for me was to improve on a daily basis because that's how i can improve on whatever activity that i do and here again talking about my upsc journey the first year of my preparation was very much in, I mean, I was taken to extremes in terms of my thought process, in terms of my approach. Uh, I was preparing very hard, but I, I mean, there should be a certain direction and all. I was not preparing, I was not focusing on uh, the previous year questions and all. The, the pressure was so intense from my side. I was ag actually adding the pressure on my side, from myself actually. I started understanding later on that I need to be open to whatever situation that is thrown at me. Because mm -hmm. when I started this preparation for UPSC, I only told to myself that come whatever may be, I am going to be responsible for whatever I do. There's nobody external things, nobody to blame if, it, if something goes wrong was the thought process. So after the first year of my preparation, I started slightly opening up. Because I was very much slightly more introvert, slightly cocooned. Then I started after the first year of UPC preparation, I opened up myself. I started focusing on my hobbies. I followed tennis a lot. My, I'm a huge fan of uh, Rafael Nadal, this fantastic place. I was focusing on these small, small things. I was studying, but I need to focus on small, minute things, which can turn my preparation slightly better. So I understood that all these top players, they focus on small things which keep them more motivated. I understood that rather thinking from the exam perspective, if I think from my perspective, from the life perspective, improving on myself will keep me more motivated was a thought process. And that's how all that years, I was fo actually focusing on myself, improving on each and every task. like. Even the kind of workouts which I usually do, achha, stay focused in whatever activity that I do. And again, as I was saying, uh, the visualization process, uh, which again, that particular 2022 UPC attempt, 2021 and attempt, where I've given 2020, interview in 2022. That particular year, a huge amount of uh, work was going on behind this visualization process. I walk. I was visualizing this should go like this and even if something comes, I'm going to tackle with very calm, controlled way. I'm not going to think too much. I'm going to stay very calm. I'm going to smile. So this was the thought process. So that's how I was focusing on these minute things. And although I was visualizing that I would be clearing UPC and all, but the result was other way. And I was like, still I was calm, controlled. I was not under any kind of panic. And again, my parents support. Without them, uh, nothing is possible, actually, frankly speaking. And then, NABAD preparation, the 10 days which you were saying, because of this positive attitude which I developed all these years and the visualization process which was being done. And that, although I was not doing that visualization process for NABAD as such, but that positive attitude has helped me stay very much calm controlled and I was having this uh, attitude that just focus 
on the work which you're doing. Even if something other comes in your mind, I'm not going to think about that. I'm only going to focus on what I'm going to do. That was the thought process, sir. and that's how I'm. St- I was staying more focused in what I was doing in all those years. So, uh, Bharat, I just wanted to share one thing with you, sir. When I was just discussing with him before the interview, he has shared a very important thing about his father. When your father called you, yes. when you were giving UPSC examination, you returned home by. You said you were saying that your father called you, and this really motivates you. So, what was that small conversation that happened between you and your father, sir? Having uh, given the UPSC interview and the result was the other way around. Then prelims came within five days uh, after the result. Then I had to prepare for that. I felt I really did well in that pre. But once when I checked the result, uh, it was the other way around. Then my father called me when I was in Hyderabad. My my father actually called me and he said, "Just don't think about any other thing. Just focus on your UPSC preparation. Nobody." Yes, God is testing you. Just stay very calm. I don't need to say anything to you, but we are there. Just focus on your UPSC preparation. That was the. I mean, uh, I don't know how to put in words. Actually, I was very much like uh, that. That's how they were supporting right from the start. My father and my mother. We come from a very humble background. My father was very much supporting my mother as well. In fact, once. that kind of words came from them even i was very much calm controlled but they were very much uh, support in terms of uh, the way they were uh, speaking to me and all so once when i told to myself i'll take time go back home spend some time with my family and then once when i went back home i was actually again thinking uh, let me go to upsc <laughs> go to upsc was there but the thought process as i was saying Uh, let me prepare for uh, let, let me take some part time activity which i was telling you earlier mm-hmm. and then again my mother was like mm-hmm. what are you uh, talking it's not needed that's how both my parents were supportive right from start till the end i think there are very two two very important things that you have told here is one thing is your calmness that you never at any point of your preparation you never thought you are not in a panic mode that let me do this thing let me do thing one thing that's really great thing that students should learn from you and one that is a really motivating factor because when family is motivating you you are not achieving the thing that you have visualized but then you know that there is no nothing in my back my parents are with me and that gives you a very great push so we we'll discuss about whole journey uh, bharat but There is one thing that is left here is interview, and then you have just briefed about non-merit sections earlier on to the students that you have discussed about the non-merit section. But still, I wanted to I wanted to know from you because you are preparing for UPSC. Yes. Still, if I talk about non-merit sections, these are quant, reasoning, English, which somehow is something which is really difficult for a UPSC aspirant. And then there is a the topics like decision making. or computer knowledge which is not something that generally upsc aspirant is preparing esi ga so they have in touch but for that they are not that much in touch so what was your strategy for that for the non merit section so non merit section uh, right from schooling days uh, i was slightly good at quant and logical reasoning and other things and in fact uh, i was good at those things so that's how i was not under any kind of panic or something like i have to focus on quant and these kind of things and english because of the exposure that i was having from upsc reading newspaper on a daily basis uh, that has helped me actually and that's how i was uh, uh, able to solve the quant logical reasoning in english that's how it is sir, actually okay so that's one thing that you have really shared that i think one thing that's very important is that you just thought that The the for non merit section only that much time needs to be given which just give me a clarity which is just which just tell to me that qualify हो जाएगा तो बहुत है but now let's talk about interview so tell us about the whole thought process that went from because UPSC is a push for the mains but when you were being called from interview so what was your source of preparation that you have done for the interview because you have given interviews of UPSC also yes, so what was your thought process at that point of time? So again, I have to be frank. Once the NABARD mains is done, I was not thinking about the interview and all because I knew that uh, I have done slightly well in NABARD mains. I was thinking, but again, I I did not want that 
slightly uh, i did not want to be complacent uh, with the nabard mains i knew that i had done well but did not want that to affect my upsc preparation so in that november what i was actually doing was i was very much intense in terms of prepare, preparing for my geography optional because i knew that i scored slightly less to what i was expecting in the upsc mains uh, given earlier so i was focusing on geography option for the entire november giving tests and all these things and now about interview was not in my mind because i knew the result will out will be out and i was like two months or one month will be there for nabard uh, interview preparation was the thought process so december second i think nabard uh, the mains results were out i checked the results on december 8th and again uh, i started i felt like okay nabard interview is there now i have to prepare for this and here again i have to uh, point out that uh, Uh, my state pieces was there actually okay the state pieces pre was uh, scheduled for jan 8th and i was like uh, now but dates were not out still yet but it, they were given somewhere in the last week of uh, uh, december i think so the dates were given and my interview date was scheduled on jan 9th okay jan 8th was my state pieces exam and jan 9th was my uh, now interview. interview i was like what is this i thought <laughs> and i was not under any kind of pressure again i was like chillo but the thing is i had to give my pre in my uh, city visakhapatnam and the interview in hyderabad okay ha huh. so i had to i was like exam gets finished by 4 i'll catch the train at 5 reach uh, hyderabad. hyderabad morning 6 i'll be reaching there so i'll give it i'll directly go to the interview so that was the thought process but the call was whether to prepare for my state pcs or for nabard oh uh, uh, interview so here i have decided that my state pcs okay i, I can do this uh, nabard interview i have to focus on because it's uh, it's a, it's an opportunity for me again once again uh, after giving this upsc interview here for this particular interview the preparation was again very rigorous so, like in fact for my upsc interview i was analyzing where it went wrong where it must have went wrong in my upsc interview i was analyzing all those things one thing that i understood in my upsc interview was i was not exposed to the ground realities because upsc preparation you are very much alone you prepare the home or the libraries and all these things so you're not uh, you don't go out and see what exactly is happening and all these things of course you read a lot you watch news and all these things but talking to people meeting them and understanding from their perspective is entirely different here again as as talking about the course uh, edutap has again helped me immensely the small small things which they were saying i was again focusing on those small things having that exposure i was uh, meeting people i met my uh, ddm and all those people i was speaking uh, uh, the far, i was speaking to the farmers in the local market i was speaking to the right barosa kendra people and all these people so this is how i was maintaining my uh, i was uh, yeah. preparing preparing for, for my right exposure yeah interview the exposure part i was taking care of and rest of the other things i knew that i have to be prepared very much because as i was saying the upsc exposure uh, the exposure which i was missing I, i need to take care of that that was taken care but in terms of the answer quality i need to be much more exposed of nabards initiative and all these things and that's where i was focusing on uh, nabards youtube channel and uh, nabard reports and all these things and even i was doing such a detail that deta- detailed work of focusing on the reports the financial data and all these things what kind of initiatives it must have provided and that's how uh, i i've taken care of few questions actually uh, where suggestions for nabard or these kind of questions uh, uh, because those kind of questions are slightly the differentiating factor which will be between you and the other uh, candidates and using these uh, small small data and small small reports financial reports financial data and all of nabar i just uh, sorted out uh, a good prepare a good preparation for my interview so 
Okay, so, but have you given the mock interviews? Because you have analyzed, you have exposed to all each and everything, but have you given the mock interviews also? Yes, sir. Uh, indeed, I have given three mock interviews uh, for, for this NABAD uh, interview before giving this NABAD interview. And uh, they were really helpful, sir. Uh, the mock interviews were just a check on my yes. preparation and all. So, right from I think December uh, 10th, 11th onwards, I have focused on. On a weekly basis, I'm going to give the mock interviews. And more than the mock interviews, sir, I really felt the importance of preparing with the peer groups. I mean, the, uh, the members in the group. And uh, they have really, I mean, so I need to speak to people. I need to question on my question myself. Uh, they can question me. So that's how, that has really helped me in my preparation. Okay. Even before my state PCS mails also, I was doing that kind of group discussion and all. Okay. And it was really good, sir. Okay. So, we have discussed what is there and how was the final interview? That's my last point to know about this examination study. How was the interview going on? Because you, because the journey that you have discussed with me, I think there might be a drilling there also. In terms of, you are prepared for UPSC. Again, UPSC is your main source of push. So, what was the main thing that happened in interview? Anything mm -hmm. you want to share with the experience? Sure, sir. Mm -hmm. The interview went very well. Uh, firstly, starting, they asked few HR questions uh, and after that, they directly went to NABAD actually. So, they talked about my work experience, then they went to the NABAD uh, sources, what kind of sources were you preparing for. And here, they were asking uh, what is something interesting that you found and all they were asking. And I was prepared for this answer actually, like uh, for this kind of questions because we have transcripts and all yeah. that, that have helped. and. I still remember, as I was saying, the preparation for interview was very much rigorous and all. The first phase was the chairman's message actually of NABAD's okay. report, annual report. There is this quote of the chairman's message, uh, we should leave, in the end, we should leave our footprints. Uh, that's, th that's the small tagline, there's this full quote is there, but uh, we should ensure that we leave our footprints was the quote. So, I knew that if I say this quote, uh, it, it can give a more impact. Uh, in terms of observing small, small things. Yes, sir. So, th the question was asked and I said that this quote is something that has really uh, touched me. In fact, it is a really wonderful quote, no doubt about that. And that is one thing and then I spoke about the report and all those things. And they slightly uh, grilled in terms of the functions and all those things. So they asked me about, uh, most of the things were from NABAD report, the district PLP state, uh, uh, okay. state focus paper, that was there, they asked those things. And then again, the last question, do you want to share anything with us? And that's something, as I was saying, I was, I knew that most people would go on with the toppers uh, answers, which can sound uh, uh, just very normal, I felt. I knew I had to be slightly more, uh, diff I'm slightly different from others. So I was, look, as I was saying, uh, the reports, the financial fact, the figures and all those things which I was focusing on for the interview preparation, I came out with five factor, five suggestions which would be good, I felt. And uh, I was speaking to people in Nabat, I mean, uh, my seniors and all who I met. So were these good or not, all these things I was asking them. In fact, uh, I still remember the newspaper preparation that I was uh, giving all those years. Uh, I still remember the Kerala Fiber Optical Network, which was there. And NABAD's role is to actually to deepen the financial uh, awareness and financial literacy to the people. And obviously, uh, Fiber Optical Network, the Digital India, the, the Bharat uh, Net and all these things can actually deepen the financial awareness. I knew if NABAD can ask the state governments to implement the schemes like yes, yes. Kerala Fiber Optical Network, it would be really good uh, to enhance or to deepen the financial awareness. So I knew this would slightly be a better one. And I, I decided I would be saying only one, although I've made five. Okay. I'd be saying only this one. And uh, I feel that must have played a role or any other things also. Okay. So this was, this was, this was really nice talking to you, Bharat. But any last point of message you want to share with the aspirants about the whole journey that you have lived? So all I can say for the aspirants, for the fellow aspirants or for the future aspirants is that 
just have self belief in yourself just focus on yourself rather than the external events and just stay confident hard work will pay and just have the effort in the right direction and that's what uh, i would just suggest uh, all the fellow aspirants and the future aspirants so wish you all the best for us for your future and i think one thing that you have pushed in clearing the nawad examination is it still going on <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, that that push is there. The uh, driving factor is there, and I really feel Nawad is a fantastic organization, and uh, I'll definitely see what how I can uh, contribute uh, through this organization, sir. So it was really really nice talking to you, Bharat. Wishing you all the best for your future, and I hope the dream that you have, the force that have pushed you, including the Nawad Gate examination. you can achieve that also one day yes. uh, thank you sir thanks for the wishes and thanks for the invitation as well thank you thank you sir thank you sir